everybody, it's Lori from the Art Studio at Madison Children's Museum. I'm excited to be here to show you all of the wonderful things that you can make with your Jelly Art Print Shop Kit. We're going to be able to use our Print Shop Kit to make these absolutely beautiful printed papers. Each one is going to be unique, one of a kind, and you can use these papers for an infinite amount of other art projects and craft projects that will take up hours and hours and give you lots of fun and creative time. So what is jelly printing? It sounds like we're going to be printing with grape jelly like peanut butter and jelly or something. That's not what we're doing. Jelly printing is a modern form of a very old kind of printmaking called gelatin plate printing. And in the old days, printmakers would make a special plate that would be made out of natural gelatin like you would have in a jello, except it was stiffer. And then that plate would only last for a short amount of time before it would have to be thrown away. So the Jelly Arts Company has created a special polymer plastic substitute for the gelatin plate that lasts forever. You can use it over and over again. It's got a funny texture. It's sort of like a squishy gummy bear. And uh, we're gonna be using a roller a, called a brayer. We're gonna be applying acrylic paint to our jelly plate and then manipulating it, making designs on it with tools and pressing paper on and then peeling it off. And then we get something called a mono print. A mono print is a single print where every print looks different. If you use a technique uh, like a stamp printing or woodblock printing, you're gonna get hundreds and hundreds of prints that all look the same. With jelly printing, you're gonna be able to make these mono prints where each print is different and unique. And you can even do some incredible techniques where you overprint your paper with different colors and that's gonna create complex and beautiful patterns. And everything we're going to be doing to make these patterns is going to be done using everyday household objects. It's really, really fun and it's a lot like play. I can't wait to get started. Let's set up our print shop. The process that we're gonna be doing is a little bit on the messy side. So you wanna be ready to get your hands a little bit covered with paint and you sh might wanna wear an older shirt or a smock, roll up your sleeves. If you have an apron, you could wear that. Now we're also gonna need to think about the area that we're gonna be using for printing and we need to protect that surface. So I've put paper out on my table. I'm gonna need enough space to lay out my prints and the paint that we're using is a permanent acrylic paint. So it's gonna stain anything it touches. So we have to make sure that we don't get any of that paint on our table. Let's set up a tray to print in. I'm using an old cafeteria tray that I like to use for my art projects. You could use an old cookie sheet or any kind of uh, platter that you could protect with foil. Uh, I've got a surface under my plate that I made from a sheet of wax paper. You could use wax paper, freezer paper, or foil. Your jelly plate is a little bit sticky and it uh, is not good to put it directly on a piece of paper because it will, some of the silicone oil in it might leach out and, and mess it up. So you wanna make sure that you have something smooth underneath it like plastic, foil, or wax paper, or freezer paper. Let's look at all of the materials that come with your printing kit. You're gonna be receiving a starter kit of acrylic paints in different colors. And then we're including some different papers. These are your starter papers that are cut into squares and we have some handmade paper bookmarks. And underneath it, I just have some office paper from around the house. You can gather other papers to print with. Uh, anything you might have, even lined office paper or old papers that you've even drawn on. We can experiment with all kinds of different things. Now, we need to gather some household recycled materials that we're gonna be using to make patterns on our jelly plate. So what I have here, one of the easiest things to use is the rounded end of a paintbrush. You could also use the eraser of a new pencil. And you're gonna to wanna to use things on your jelly plate that are smooth. If you use things that are pointy or sharp or metal, they might gouge the plate and then make a line that is permanent. So you wanna make sure that you use only smooth things on your jelly plate. 
I've also got a scrap of bubble wrap. This makes super cool patterns. And I found a bottle cap that's plastic. You wouldn't want to use a metal bottle cap. This bottle cap, I'm going to show how to make some pretty incredible patterns using it in different ways. I found a cup that we're going to be able to use both sides of the cup to make patterns. Here's an old comb. You don't want to use a comb that you still want to use to comb your hair. Maybe you can find one that, that is uh, a little bit broken or not usable anymore. I found this cool stuff. This is from the recycle bin. It is uh, used around a fruit to protect it. I've got a wad of foil that I've pressed down. We're gonna make patterns with this. Now this is kind of neat. This is something you can make. I've taken a strip of this foam packaging that might come in a package in the mail, and I'm gonna use a different ways to manipulate it. So I'm rolling my strip of foam up and then I'm going to take my rubber band and I'm going to use the rubber band to go around the middle. Now there are all kinds of different ways that you could manipulate this foam piece to make different patterns. Um, and that's about all we need except for this is something that's going to be super handy. I've got a wet rag. I just took my rag and wet it under the sink. This is going to be really useful for cleaning up as we go. Are you ready to get started printing? All we need now is our special jelly plate. I'm going to make room for it here. Now it comes with these protective sheets on it. You're going to want to take off your protective sheets and set them aside. Don't lose them because these are going to be very useful for storing your jelly plate after you clean it up so you can use it again. I'm going to set it down on my wax paper. It's a really fun texture. It's very fun to touch. Now the other special tool that we're going to be needing is our jelly print roller. This is also sometimes called a brayer. And we're going to be using our roller to apply our acrylic paint to our plate and then we're going to use that paint manipulated to print on our paper. Ready to get started? Let's print. I'm all ready to get started. I've got my paint set out and my mixing sticks and my roller and then I'm going to be doing my first print manipulated with the end of my paintbrush. I'm going to start by just choosing a single color for my first print. I'm going to use my craft stick and I'm going to apply a little bit of paint to my plate. It's surprising how little paint that you really need to get a good print. Then I'm going to use my roller. I'm going to go a couple different directions until I have completely covered my plate with my blue paint. Now I'm going to use the end of my paintbrush to wipe across my plate and make some squiggly designs. You could do anything you want. Now you're going to work pretty quickly and you're going to press your square of paper down on your jelly plate and smooth it all around and then let's see what we get when we pull it off. Whoa, there's our first print. Now these get a little bit curly when you pull them off of your plate. So when I set it aside, it might not stay flat. We're going to flatten it out later as it dries. Now let me show you what else we can do. We've got a little bit of ink left on our plate. What I like to do is add to what I have here. You don't really have to clean it off. So I'll use my wet rag here so I can use my stick and clean it. Let's see what, looks, what it looks with adding some other colors. So I've got blue now and some green. And now after I wipe my stick off, let's add some additional colors. I've got a little bit of yellow. I'm going to use some of this yellow. All right. Now my roller, I didn't even clean it off. I'm going to use those colors to add. So watch, let's roll it across. This time I'm only going one direction and go back the other way. Now let's see what this looks like when we print it. Now we've included in your kit a lot of different colors of paper. So sometimes the color of the background of the paper will come through onto your print, which is kind of interesting. Let's see what we got. 
Whoa, that's really beautiful. See this one, I didn't even manipulate the paint. I just used the roller as a tool. And I'm setting it aside. One of the amazing things that we can do with this whole process is to layer our colors as we go. So this one I'm leaving, I've got some paint on my tray. I'm gonna put a little red over on this side. And actually I kind of look like how this looks with my stick manipulating it. Let's see what else we can do. I'm just gonna apply this actually with a stick. This is so much like play. You're gonna really enjoy the whole process of seeing what you can do. I'm gonna use my rolled up foam and I'm gonna press it down into my paint. Now I'm gonna work quickly. I'm gonna press this over the top and see what I got. Now your acrylic paint is gonna dry fairly quickly. So whatever you do with your plate, you're gonna want to do pretty quick. See, look how that turned out. It's almost like a little landscape. I'm gonna set that aside. What should we do now? Let's add, I like this hot pink. So you don't need very much. I'm gonna add a little hot pink and then I'm gonna add some purple. Let's see what we get. I've still got paint on my roller from before. Whoa. See, my colors are mixing, but I'm not going back and forth a lot. I'm just using my roller to pull the paint across. Now let's try, this is our comb. I'm gonna put the comb down onto the surface and now I'm gonna press it down as I wobble it back and forth. Look at that. Take my paper, press it on the top. So you can play around and you can discover so many incredible designs that you can create. And you know what? If some of them don't turn out exactly right, like this one, my swirlies, they only showed up in part of the paper, that's fine. We'll set this aside and we'll overprint it with something else. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna just keep working on my plate. I didn't clean that roller at all. I'm just manipulating it as I, as I see it. Now here's my cup that I found. I'm gonna use the circle part of the top of the cup and I'm going to press it into my plate a bunch of times. And this time I think I'll choose this blue paper so I get a little bit of blue showing through. Every print is like a discovery. It's so fun. You want to make sure you press it down all the way across so that you get all the print detail. That turned out very, very cool. Now I love when you have the ghost of the other colors underneath. If you want to though, you don't have to keep that. You can use your rag and you can clean off your brayer and your plate so that you can start again from scratch. I'm gonna use this just to clean those little bits off of my plate so I have a fresh, clean surface to start with. Now, let me show you a few other fun things that you can do. I'm going to use um, a bit of my light blue and my dark blue. And then I'm gonna add a little of this dark green. And I'm gonna try to do something called a rainbow roll. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use my brayer going up and down this way and I'm gonna move it from side to side a little bit. See how it goes side to side and I'm blending the blue and the green into a gradation like that. Now let's make some patterns. You can take your piece of bubble wrap and lay it the bubble side down onto your plate, press it down a little bit, pull it up. I'm gonna cover my whole plate with the bubble wrap and pull it up. This is one of my favorite prints to make is the bubble wrap print. See how the bubbles look? Now I might print this again. That came out a little bit too dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what happens if I just press another piece down on my paper.
and see that picked up more of that bubble texture. Let's keep going. Remember, you want to once you get started with this process, you want to keep it going because the paint will dry relatively quickly. So this time, I think I need to add a little bit more. Let's see, what should I add this time? How about some yellow? And I like how that looks with that just swirly yellow. You don't have to blend everything perfectly. So now I'm gonna take this weird foam that I found and press it down and lift it off and see what it looks like. That's pretty cool. I thought it would show both of the sides, but it only gives you those lines. So this is really an adventure to look around to see what you can find to make patterns with. What did we get? That's pretty cool. It's like the ocean. Look at that. Cool. These are going to be so beautiful as we overprint them. I'm going to do a little bit of green and yellow. So you can get a lot of prints with a very little amount of paint. And this is just a starter kit. You can use any acrylic paints. You can even uh, experiment with other kinds of paint like tempera paint. Sometimes the tempera paint doesn't stick well to the plate and it kind of, uh, it'll sort of like ball up a little bit, but you can use it. The only thing you should not use on your plate is ink. If you have an ink pad ink, it'll stain your plate permanently. So don't try that. Let me show you what you can do with your bottle cap. So I'm gonna use my bottle cap as sort of a drawing tool. I'm gonna to use the open side, press it down, and I'm gonna swirl it around. It's gonna kind of remove some of my ink from the plate completely, and then it's gonna give me this beautiful spiral. Let's see if any of my paper is dry. So this dries so quickly, I'm gonna take this print that I did, and I'm gonna overprint it with the spiral, so watch. I'm gonna press this down. You can have so much fun over printing. You wanna just let your print dry for enough time that you touch it and no ink comes off of it. Check this out. That is beautiful. And you can over print your, your uh, images multiple times if you want to. I'm gonna take this green that's still here. Look, there's quite a lot of it. And I'm gonna add a little bit of additional color. I'm gonna put something darker in the middle and use my brayer. Let's try that comb design again. This time I have less paint on my plates, so I'm thinking it might give me a bolder design. If you have a comb with bigger teeth, it'll make wider lines. Oh, beautiful, yeah. So sometimes it takes a little bit of practice to get just the right amount of ink on your plate uh, before you print. It's just something that you're gonna learn as you go. Let's do one with a little bit of yellow and white so that we can overprint it with a darker color. Now I really should be using a clean stick here. I am demonstrating very poor paint management. I'm, I should be cleaning off my uh, stick as I put it in the new color because guess what? If you don't do that, it'll turn brown. Oh wow, I like this bright yellow. This time I'm gonna use my foil. Where's my little ball of foil? Here it is. Let's press that on. Now, even though I said not to use metal things, this foil, I scrunched it up so that it doesn't have any sharp edges. This almost looks like a rock texture. Now, here's something fun you can do. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of paper and my scissors, and I'm gonna cut a shape. 
and it makes sort of a circle shape, but it's rough. Now I'm gonna use this as it's gonna be a stencil, so I'm gonna set my circle down. And now let's overprint one of our other papers. My green swirlies are dry. I'm gonna press this down over the top with my circle there is going to be blocking the ink from getting onto my square paper. You wanna smooth this down really well so that the edges of your circle are going to print really well. So see how that makes that beautiful contrast so that you get your circle uh, resisted. Let's pull this up. Let's see what our circle printed like. Look, we can use this too. I'm gonna set all of my scraps aside because I wanna use them later in some of our wonderful collage projects. Now let's see, I have one more thing I wanna show for techniques. Let me add some red. Now, if you want to learn even more about how to use the jelly plate and some incredible advanced techniques, you can go to jellyarts.com, the maker of the jelly plate, and they have some wonderful videos. And they show all kinds of incredible advanced techniques that you can do with your jelly plate. So see here, I'm just smearing this time I'm not even using my brayer. I'm just smearing my paint on and blending it a little bit using my stick. This is just like a fun experimental art project where you can just dream up just about anything. And if you get some duds, it's fine because you can overprint them. There are no mistakes with jelly printing. So see what other paints you might have in your art kits that you could incorporate. Oh, that looks super cool. Look at that. So leaving those empty spaces like that is gonna make these really sharply defined designs. In fact, I like that technique so much. I think I'm gonna overprint my green paper here with this bold red. And I'm gonna use those bright lines like that so that I get a lot of contrast. And I might even, I'm gonna add a little black to this one. You wanna use black kind of sparingly because sometimes you end up just with way too much dark black on your print. I like to stick with um, more bold colors. So see how I'm just using the rounded end of that stick and I'm just sort of applying my paint and blending it and making these really bold lines. All right, let's see how that looks over our light green and yellow. It may turn out amazing, it may be a dud. Let's see. And like I said, if it's a dud, just overprint it with something else and you'd be surprised what you're gonna end up with. I think that is really cool. That almost looks like some kind of like animal pattern for some magical animal. I'm gonna keep my ghost print here. I call it a ghost print when you get like some left on your plate. Let's see what that looks like. And then if you clean your plate this way, you're ready to start over. Sometimes when you have some ghost image left on your plate, it's just really cool to just keep adding to it. So that's a little bit light, but I think if I overprinted that, I could get some incredible looking patterns. So I'm going to keep that one too. Now I think I'm about ready to stop printing for today. Now keep going for as long as you want. You can see how much I made just using a little bit of paint. You really don't need very much. Uh, you can experiment with other acrylic paints. You might have metallic paints look really beautiful uh, and see what else that you can do. But if I'm done for the day, I'm going to use my wet rag I'm going to clean off my brayer like so. You can wash it under the sink as well. You wanna make sure that you keep your brayer really clean. And when you store your brayer, watch this. I'm gonna store it, oh, and I see I missed a spot. I'm gonna store it with the roller side up. If you store it the other way, you might get a flat spot on your roller. So you wanna keep your brayer stored this way. I'm gonna wipe off my plate. Now I should take it over to the sink and I should wash it with a little bit of dish soap and lay it to dry. 
And then you can, when it's, I'm gonna go wash this first, but once it's completely washed, you can take those pieces of plastic and stick your piece of plastic to each side, and then you can store your jelly plate for the next time you wanna print. And your paint pots, you can just close the lids and they'll be ready for next time. I really think you're gonna have a lot of fun exploring the world of monoprinting and exploring the world of found objects to make marks on your plates. I can't wait to see what everybody creates with their jelly print shop kit. But we're not done yet. We're gonna save all of our jelly prints and we're gonna use this beautiful paper that we've made to create some other fun crafts. Ready to get started? Let me show you some really fun art techniques that you can use with your jelly print paper to make even more wonderful artworks that you might even want to keep in your journal as a, a, a scrapbook. So I've got a few of my other art materials out to work with my jelly paper. I brought out my oil pastels and I have a black marker. So I'm gonna show off some easy ways that you can transform your jelly print paper into yet another artwork. So in this technique, I drew a simple shape. You could also trace a stencil, or you could trace around a household object like coffee cups or cookie cutters. And then I used my black marker to fill in just the background. So I'll start another one so I can show you how that works. I'm gonna use a pencil first to draw my outline. So with this one, let me think about what should I draw here? How about a sun? I'm going to draw with my pencil where I want my lines. And then I'm gonna outline with my marker. And then I'm gonna fill in that outline. And so what that leaves me with is this beautiful shape. I'm not even gonna to go to the edge. I'm just gonna go around the side. And now you can transform your jelly print paper into something else. You might look at the colors and think about what they remind you of. This one definitely reminded me of the sun, those yellows and oranges. I'm gonna go all the way around and then I'll draw some details in the center. I always like to draw a face on my sun. It's a little bit of a cliche, but it's just one of the things that make me happy. Let's turn it around. So that's an idea that you might want to try. Let me show you a couple other things that you can do with art materials and your jelly paper. One idea is to use oil pastels to go over the top of your jelly paper to embellish it. In this one, I just decided to add some details to one of my plain prints. So this one also has a circle. So I'm gonna use a similar color like my dark green and I'm gonna come in and go around the edge of my circle to maybe make it stand out a little bit more. Now, if you don't have oil pastels, you could also use crayons or markers or, what, or pencil or whatever you might have in your art material box. Markers work pretty well too, as you could see from the one I did with just the black marker. And then let me add a few more details to the yellow part of the paper. I'm gonna use my orange oil pastel and I'm gonna add some random triangles to the background. And then again, if you want to, you could even cut up this paper and use it for more collage like we did for our book cover. Now maybe you might look at your paper and you might decide this kind of reminds me of something. Like, what does this remind me of? I wonder if I could use this and transform it into a scene. So this sort of reminds me a little bit of snow and I've got sky here. So I'm gonna use my white oil pastel to create a little bit of snow down at the bottom. And uh, I'm drawing upside down here. 
I'm gonna make some trees. Sometimes drawing upside down is really surprisingly fun. And you might get a completely different outlook on your artwork if you work on it in a different direction. Let's see how mine turns out. I'm trying to do some pine trees here in sort of a snowy landscape. Let's see, I need a little bit of brown for my tree trunk. Can you see how it's starting to turn into a little bit of a snow scene here? I'm gonna add a little bit of definition to my trees, my upside down trees. And what else does my snow scene mean, need? Maybe a moon in the corner. So you might look at some of the papers that you made and you might start to sort of see designs in them that you can make come to life by just adding a few special details. I'm gonna turn it around and look at it. I like these upside down trees. I wonder what you're gonna be able to create if you look at your jelly prints and think about what they could be. Do you wanna learn more about jelly printing? Then you can go to jellyarts.com. This is the creator of our jelly printing kit that we use to make all of these wonderful papers. They have videos that will teach you how you can do additional techniques, such as using natural materials to print with your jelly plate, how to print on fabric, how to use rubber stamps, lots of advanced techniques that even adults might wanna try. Give it a look, they're a great company.